hello students uh, in today's lecture we are going to start the next chapter next unit uh, the next unit uh, is fuel supply systems in uh, your automobile uh, engines or automobiles now what is a fuel supply system uh, the fuel injection system it is uh, the most vital component of any working uh, engine because uh, any engine uh, requires a fuel uh, to power uh, to produce power okay uh, the engine uh, performance power output economy efficiency etc they are all greatly dependent upon the effectiveness of the fuel injection system okay now if we talk of any automobile so it runs under various uh, load conditions so at starting uh, the air fuel mixture required is different for idling conditions when uh, you are not moving your vehicle uh, but your vehicle is in the start uh, position okay so at that time you need different uh, uh, type of uh, fuel air fuel mixture when you are cruising means you are moving on a highway and you are cruising at say 80 kilometers per hour and you are not changing the speed okay so you require different uh, air fuel ratio when you are accelerating okay means you are increasing your speed during acceleration the load on the engine is different so this means that engine at all the time is under different loading conditions depending upon how you are moving the car uh, if you are moving your vehicle in a congested area where there is lot of rush is there so you are frequently uh, uh, stopping your vehicle you are frequently starting your vehicle so engine load is uh, changing at every instant so this means the fuel supply system should be efficient enough to recognize that uh, situation the load that is required on the engine and it should uh, adapt to that uh, change effectively and quickly uh, so with that what will happen is you will increase the efficiency and the economy uh, of the engine and uh, the average uh, or the mileage of the engine will also increase okay. so the effectiveness of the supply system is very essential depending upon the changing load conditions now the task of uh, the engine fuel injection system is to prepare uh, the air fuel mixture from the ambient air okay so the air is coming from the atmosphere and fuel is coming from the fuel tank okay. so the fuel injection system has to uh, mix this air and fuel okay uh, according to the requirements of the engine load requirements of the engine okay so a proper mixture uh, should the fuel supply system should be able to provide the proper air fuel mixture to the engine okay now this uh, if the uh, fuel supply system is proper so that will also ensure smooth and reliable operation of the engine okay and then uh, if we look at the various uh, components of a fuel injection system the so first component is your the pumping element or the fuel pump is there now this pump it uh, moves the fuel from the fuel tank to the fuel injectors okay, or uh, in the case of a petrol engine to your carburetor so this includes uh, your pipe fittings and your filters then metering element it measures and supplies the fuel at the rate demanded by the load and speed conditions okay so there is a metering unit that uh, measures that uh, what is the load condition of the engine and according to the load condition it supplies the required air fuel mixture to the engine then there is a mixing element okay now the fuel that has to be supplied it needs to be in the atomized form okay we cannot uh, uh, just uh, put the fuel inside okay we need to atomize that fuel uh, before it goes into the combustion chamber so that a homogeneous mixture of air fuel is uh, produced okay. so a mixing element it atomizes the fuel 
and then it mixes that fuel with the air to form a homogeneous mixture before that air fuel is sent to the combustion chamber. Then we have a metering control unit, which adjusts the rate of metering in accordance with the load and speed of the engine. Then mixture control, it adjusts the air fuel ratio depending upon the load of the engine and the speed of the vehicle. Then is your distributing element. Now distributing element, it divides the uh, metered fuel. That is metered fuel is, uh, which is uh, in correct proportion according to the requirement okay, of the engine. It divides that uh, fuel equally among all the cylinders. So if we have a four cylinder engine, so the distributing element, it will uh, mix the air fuel and then it will distribute that air fuel equally among all the four cylinders, if it is a four cylinder engine. Then another uh, component is your timing control. The timing control, it fixes the start and stop of the air fuel mixing process. Okay. So when the air fuel mixture process is to be started and stopped, uh, that is done with the help of timing control. And then is your ambient control. The components uh, are uh, there inside uh, the vehicle or the automobile that uh, changes uh, in temperature and pressure of either air or fuel uh, that may affect the various elements of the system. Okay. Now, uh, the this uh, component that is the ambient control. Okay, it uh, this component uh, it uh, adapts itself uh, according to the ambient conditions. Okay, uh, now ambient conditions means atmospheric conditions. Uh, if you are running your vehicle in uh, uh, say November or December, then the temperature outside is very low. It can be around zero degree centigrade. Okay. And on the other hand, if you're running your vehicle in June and July, the temperature may be 40 or 45 degrees. Centigrade. So the ambient conditions are different. And with these uh, change in ambient conditions, okay, the temperature, uh, the mixing of air fuel mixture, it also has an effect. Now, when the air is cold, it is uh, in the compressed form. When the air is hot, it is in the expanded form. So this means the volume of air, if the same volume of air I take in winters and same volume of air, if I take in winters, they will have a different composition of oxygen in it. So the air in winter, it will be in condensed form. It will have more oxygen particles as compared to the air if I collect it in the summers. So it is in the expanded form. So oxygen particles are less. Okay. Plus, if I am on hilly areas, the density of air is less, pressure is also less. So this means per unit volume, oxygen molecules will be less. So under varying conditions, ambient conditions, I need to have a system or a control unit that changes the inlet conditions uh, before the air fuel goes into the combustion chamber. So what we do in when we are running your vehicle in uh, hilly areas or where the temperature uh, uh, or the pressure is low. Okay? So we use supercharges. So supercharges, what they do is they compress the air before it enters the uh, combustion chamber. So by compressing the air per unit volume, we increase the amount of oxygen particles. So that is your ambient control uh, is there. Okay, next slide, if you see, this is uh, the arrangement of uh, the conventional uh, fuel supply system that is under use. So here we have uh, on, the, on the right hand side, you can see this is the fuel tank. From the fuel tank, uh, the pipe, it takes the fuel uh, to the fuel filter. Okay, and then there is a fuel pump. So this fuel pump, it sucks in the fuel from the fuel tank that comes out and goes into the fuel filter and where uh, the fuel gets uh, filtered. If there are any uh, solid particles or sediments mixed in the fuel, they get filtered out and pure fuel uh, 
is uh, pump uh, from the fuel line into the carburetor in the carburetor uh, from the right hand side fuel is coming in and from the left hand side air from atmosphere it is passed through the air filter and then from the pipe it goes into the carburetor so carburetor what it does is it according to the requirement or the load conditions of the engine it mixes uh, the air fuel according to the requirement okay so the carburetor mixes the uh, correct amount of air fuel and then it is passed on to the combustion chamber into the engine and uh, it is supplied to the engine for the combustion process so this is my conventional uh, fuel supply system on the other hand this is uh, the modern fuel supply system this is uh, one of uh, the modern it will give you an idea of uh, uh, what the modern uh, supply system is there so here we have a battery uh, battery is uh, connected to the ignition switch okay. and uh, one of uh, the wires is connected to the solenoid is there so when we uh, turn on the key the circuit here it uh, completes itself and the current passes through this 15 ampere fuse uh, to the pump okay so there are two types of pumps there is on the left hand side on top of this fuel tank you can see this is your low pressure pump and then this is your high pressure pump so the electric uh, circuit completes and both the low pressure pump and the high pressure pump they start now the low pressure pump what it does is uh, <clears throat> it is connected with the help of a fuel supply pipe uh, inside the fuel tank and in the fuel tank there is a strainer here now this strainer is a pre filter that filters out any solid uh, sediments that are mixed in the fuel okay and then this fuel it passes through this low pressure fuel pump and then it goes into the fuel filter where this uh, fuel gets filtered uh, filtered and then it goes into the surge tank the surge tank is a reservoir you can say it is an intermediate reservoir fuel reservoir where the uh, pressured fuel is stored from here the fuel it goes into the high pressure fuel pump where the pressure of the fuel is increased uh, up to 80 bar okay so uh, so normal uh, this uh, in the fuel tank the pressure of fuel will be atmospheric in the low pressure uh, fuel pump the pressure is increased to around 10 bar and in the surge tank the fuel at 10 bar is stored and then in the high pressure fuel pump the pressure is increased further to around 80 bar now this high pressure fuel with the help of these feed lines it is supplied to these fuel injectors that are installed inside the various cylinders of the engine and then the extra fuel uh, is through this uh, fuel pressure regulator uh, the extra fuel is pumped uh, back into the surge tank. Now, they, if there is uh, extra fuel inside the surge tank, that fuel overflows through this uh, return line and through the return line, it goes back into the fuel tank. Okay. Now, this is the whole circuit of a modern fuel supply system. So next uh, is uh, uh, we'll start with what is uh, carburation, okay, in which uh, we will uh, study about uh, what is a carburetor and simple carburetor we will be studying and uh, we will be studying about the working of uh, uh, the Carter's carburetor also. Okay, uh, now what is carburation is it is the process uh, of uh, preparing uh, air fuel mixture for uh, a petrol engine according to uh, the desired uh, load conditions okay now this uh, air fuel mixture is uh, prepared outside the cylinder before the intake manifold okay and uh, the device that is used to prepare this air fuel mixture is known as a carburetor now the carburetor what it does is it atomizes the fuel and mixes uh, this fuel with air uh, in uh, the proportions that depends upon uh, the various load conditions. Now, if we talk of the various load conditions, 
so load conditions are of uh, four types here that is starting idling cruising and accelerating is there now in all these four uh, conditions the amount of uh, air fuel mixture required is different during starting uh, what happens is uh, that we are starting the engine from the start and uh, the uh, you know that the static friction comes in and static friction is always greater so to overcome the static friction uh, we need to have a richer uh, fuel mixture that is we need to have more fuel and less uh, air is required so that is a richer uh, mixture okay. during idling uh, when uh, we are now we have just started the engine and we are not uh, running the automobile so in that condition also uh, the uh, to run the engine in this condition uh, because we are not putting the engine in gear okay it is only started okay so here we also need richer mixture okay then in cruising uh, we need a lean mixture uh, that is less fuel and more air <clears throat> then it, during acceleration that is we are increasing the speed we also need richer mixture so depending upon these uh, conditions these are the various load conditions uh, the carburetor uh, should perform uh, the that is uh, it it should be able to mix uh, the air fuel in the proportion that is uh, according to the load conditions now what is uh, what are the various functions of a carburetor uh, the first is it should atomize atomize vaporize and mix uh, the air and fuel homogeneously okay second is it should supply the correct amount of air fuel mixture in correct proportion under all load conditions and speed of the engine third is it must run the engine smoothly by supplying correct mixture and strength so that we have already discussed so these are the various functions of a carburetor now the factors that affect the process of carburation are the time available for mixture preparation now uh, if we uh, talk of uh, the speed with which or the rpm with which the uh, automobile it runs so if we talk of uh, say 1000 rpm so 1000 rpm at 1000 rpm so revolutions per minute is there okay so uh, how many uh, power strokes we get okay so that will come out to be around say 6 or 7 power strokes we get in a four stroke engine so this means in one second we will get six or seven power strokes so this means time available for each power stroke is very less it is in milliseconds so this is the time in within which the engine or the carburetor has to perform its function according to the uh, load conditions second is the temperature of the incoming air now temper we have already discussed this that the temperature of the incoming air is a a uh, very uh, big factor uh, that also affects the carburetion because the if the air atmospheric air is colder during winters so it will have uh, more uh, uh, oxygen particles in it okay then uh, this means uh, that uh, more oxygen per unit volume can be supplied okay so that will result in uh, proper uh, complete combustion of fuel okay in summers because the air is at higher temperature uh, so it, the particles are further apart from each other so per unit volume number of uh, oxygen atoms is less so we might have uh, a incomplete combustion taking place okay so there might be a need of a supercharger uh, that can supply compressed air during those conditions okay so that is another factor is there temperature of the incoming air or the ambient air third is the quality of the fuel supplied okay now the quality of the fuel supplied is also a deciding factor uh, this depends upon the c10 number or the octane number of the fuel depending upon it is a petrol or diesel engine okay so higher uh, the c10 or octane number uh, uh, the better the fuel is okay and it atomizes uh, easily 
Third is the engine speed. We have already seen that at lower speeds uh, or at cruising speeds, we need um, lean mixture and at higher speeds or during acceleration, uh, we need a richer mixture. Then last is the design of the carburetor. Obviously design of the carburetor is very important. There are different types of carburetors that are available and uh, depending upon the requirement uh, of the automobile, we can go for the optimum carburetor for that automobile. So these are the factors that affect the carburetion. Now, if we talk of uh, the various, uh, we have talked of uh, uh, the lean mixture and the richer mixture, and then there is chemically correct mixture is there. Okay. Now, depending upon the load conditions, uh, the various uh, air fuel mixture compositions uh, can be defined. So if we talk of chemically correct mixture, chemically correct mixture means uh, the exact amount of air particles that are required to completely combust the fuel mixture. So chemically correct is 15 is to one. This means 15 parts of air and one part of fuel. This is your chemically correct mixture. Then a rich mixture is 10 parts of uh, air and one part of fuel. And then is your lean mixture. There is 17 parts of air and one part of fuel. This is lean mixture is there. Okay. So, uh, jitna air ka content badta jayega, the more the air content, the leaner the mixture, lesser the air content, richer is the mixture. Now in the graph at the bottom, you can see that uh, the combustible range uh, depending upon uh, the uh, composition of uh, air to fuel uh, is between uh, 9 to 17 is there. Okay. So if uh, the air fuel mixture that is going in is at the ratio of 9 is to 1, the combustion will take place. But if it is less, say it is 8 or 7, so this means that uh, the air is less, fuel is more, so the combustion, it, the, the mixture is too rich to burn. So the combustion will not take place. So below nine air fuel mixture, the combustion will not take place. Okay, at 15, this is the point. This is your chemically correct mixture is there. Okay. And then uh, at 17, this is the set point 17. 17 is the maximum lean mixture you can go for. Beyond 17, if you go for 18 or 19 air fuel mixture, the mixture becomes too lean to burn. So air particles are too high. Okay. So there is a range uh, of uh, air fuel mixture within which the engine combustion can take place. Below that range and above that range, the combustion will not take place. So the air fuel ratio uh, is 9 is to 1 to 17 is to 1. This is the range if, within which the combustion inside a uh, uh, combustion chamber of an engine can take place. Okay, so this is about uh, your three types of uh, mixtures that is chemically correct, rich and lean mixtures. Now the various uh, load conditions and the mixture that is required during those load conditions. The first is your idling or starting condition. Now engine runs without load. Okay. The produced power only is to overcome the friction between the various parts. Now, rich mixture is required to sustain this combustion. So, so to sustain this combustion during starting and idling, we need to have a richer mixture. Okay. So if there will be a, a chemically correct or lean mixture, the engine will stop. Okay. So that is why sometimes when you start your car uh, or your bike and you keep it uh, on idle uh, condition, after some time it stops, the engine stops. This is because it is not able to provide rich mixture. Okay. So that is the reason why during idling, sometimes the engine stops. Next is during normal power cruising or medium load conditions, when you are running at low speed or you are cruising. Cruising means you have set the speed limit at 100 and then you have lift the pedal and your car is running at 100 kilometer per hour. Okay, without you have put your uh, feet on the pedal. That is the cruising control. Cruise control is there. Okay. Now, during those conditions, engine runs uh, for most of the period. 
therefore the fuel economy is maintained and low low fuel consumption for maximum economy is required and during these conditions if we require leaner air fuel mixture now during maximum power or acceleration that is we are if we are running at a very high speeds and or we are uh, accelerating so during that uh, that is uh, during overtaking a car vehicle or we are climbing up hill so extra load is required so during these conditions we require richer mixture so depending upon what uh, type of input we are giving uh, on your accelerator pedal so different uh, air fuel mixtures they are required so these are the various load conditions on the engine depending upon the uh, running of the engine next we can see that uh, the next is your a simple carburetor this is uh, the block or the line diagram or the diagram of a simple carburetor now if we look at the various parts of uh, the simple carburetor so we have uh, on the right hand side this is your uh, float chamber okay in this uh, float chamber on the top this pipe is here this is connected to the fuel supply from the fuel tank so the fuel comes in from here and from this pipe it enters this float chamber now this float chamber is uh, uh, it has a float inside this is made up of plastic or aluminium it is hollow from inside so if it is hollow from inside this means it will float in fuel so this float chamber level you know, from the float chamber there is this uh, pipe here uh, it goes into this uh, cylindrical chamber this is a cylinder okay now this cylinder uh, it has uh, at the bottom it has a choke valve is there and this choke valve is connected to the air supply from the air filter so air comes in from bottom it moves in uh and it moves in through this space here we have a reducing uh, area cross section area so the area here reduces where this nozzle from this float chamber is connected okay so this part is known as the venturi part okay in the venturi what is happening is here the area of cross section is more and as i enter the venturi the area of cross section becomes less and then uh, on the upper side you can see there is this throttle valve this throttle valve is connected to your accelerator pedal so if you move the accelerator the throttle valve opens and closes okay and then from here the uh, air fuel mixture goes into this this is your inlet valve so inlet valve when it opens the air fuel mixture goes inside the combustion chamber so these are the various parts of uh, the carburetor Sim, uh, if you talk of simple carburetor now you can see that uh, the level inside the maximum level of fuel inside the float chamber is uh, equal to the height of this uh, nozzle inside the this venturi okay so when the fuel fills up to this level this float it rises up and then there is this valve this triangular valve is there so this triangular wall it cuts the fuel supply inside the float chamber now when the uh, fuel is moving inside the uh, carburetor okay uh, during the working conditions so fuel is being consumed from this float chamber the level of fuel it will come down and with that this float it also comes down and this float valve opens and the fuel from the fuel tank starts to come inside so this level of fuel it makes this float move up and down uh, to keep the level of fuel equal to the level of this uh, nozzle uh, inside the venturi that is coming from this float chamber okay now during the operation if you not talk of the operation of uh, this uh, simple carburetor now if you if you talk of the various parts first let's talk of various components of a simple carburetor now a float chamber this is your float chamber on the right hand side the float chamber with the float uh, is there to store the fuel and to adjust its level so fuel level is adjusted and fuel is stored in it okay then there is a round cylinder so this is your round cylindrical uh, uh, block is there 
with a venturi there is a venturi inside that venturi has the function of atomizing the fuel okay we will see how this uh, happens inside the venturi atomization of the fuel then there is a fuel nozzle so here at the end of this uh, fuel supply there is this nozzle here there is a nozzle so this nozzle what it does is it atomizes and produces a spray of fuel when the air passes through the venturi okay then we have uh, the throttle valve the throttle valve is supplied is there just before the intake valve and it supplies the air fuel mixture at different loading conditions to the inlet valve okay so this throttle valve is connected to your uh, accelerator pedal when the accelerator is pushed downwards the throttle valve opens when the accelerator is pushed backwards the throttle valve closes so depending upon my input the valve will open and close and it will supply the uh, the required amount of air fuel mixture into the combustion chamber then there is another uh, valve that is choke valve is uh, supplied provided at the entrance to the carburetor the function of the choke valve is to control the supply of air in order to provide rich or lean mixture so during uh, that is why during uh, starting of uh, the vehicle uh, in the say colder uh, say at uh, weather what we do is we open this choke valve okay so when open we open the choke valve okay uh, then richer mix we close the choke valve actually okay when we close the choke valve uh, so when we pull the choke the choke valve closes okay so when the choke valve closes the air supply is reduced okay uh, but the fuel supply is there so richer mixture is supplied into the combustion chamber so this is the function of the choke now if you talk uh, look into the uh, function or the operation now when uh, during the intake stroke during the intake stroke so here what happens is uh, inside the combustion chamber when the piston moves from top dead center to bottom dead center a vacuum gets created inside the combustion chamber now that vacuum the inlet valve is open now there is vacuum that is created inside the carburetor <clears throat> now this vacuum what it does is it pulls the air uh from uh, outside okay uh, during the intake stroke when the vacuum is created inside the combustion chamber now this vacuum it uh, sucks in air okay now this air gets sucked uh, through this uh, choke okay and when this air moves uh, uh, into this uh, so here what is happening here the area of cross section is more now when this air it reaches this uh, venturi part where the area of cross section reduces <clears throat> so what happens here is the pressure reduces okay the velocity uh, the kinetic energy increases and with the increase in kinetic energy the pressure at this venturi part it decreases so this means there is small vacuum that is created now this vacuum automatically what it does is it sucks in fuel from this nozzle and when the fuel comes outside from the nozzle it atomizes and it a homogeneous mixture is formed between air and fuel and then this homogeneous mixture through this throttle valve is supplied into the combustion chamber so the function of uh, this uh, venturi inside this carburetor uh, what have it its function is to increase the kinetic energy of air and with this increase in kinetic energy the pressure drops in this portion this pressure drop it automatically sucks because the fuel is at uh, higher pressure okay uh, it is at uh, the pressure that is created by the pump fuel pump it is at higher pressure now when the this, there is vacuum that is created inside the venturi it automatically the fuel at higher pressure goes inside the combustion in the carburetor now when this uh, fuel it passes through this nozzle that fuel atomizes automatically and it get mixed with the air and then this uh, air fuel mixture is uh, supplied into the combustion chamber for combustion process 
Now here is uh, the venturi part. So you can see that this is my uh, nozzle that is connected. So here uh, the choke is there. So air when it comes inside uh, the area of cross section, it reduces. So this increases the kinetic energy of air. With the increase in kinetic energy, pressure drops and the fuel in the form of atomized, atomized fuel, it uh, comes outside the nozzle and it gets homogeneously mixed with the air. And from the throttle valve, it is supplied into the intake manifold into the combustion chamber. So this is the working of a venturi and how the air fuel mixture takes place inside the venturi. So this is uh, the uh, functioning of a simple carburetor. Okay, after the uh, simple carburetor, uh, the next uh, type of carburetor is your uh, the Carter carburetor. Now the Carter carburetor it was uh, developed by William Carter uh, in 1909. Uh, and uh, he has opened a company uh, by uh, the name of uh, Carter. Uh, in this, uh, it is an open choke type carburetor. You can see, uh, if you see here, the different parts of this uh, carburetor. On the right hand side, you will have, you can see the float chamber is there, okay. So in the float chamber, the float chamber is pivoted to one of the side uh, of uh, this float chamber. Uh, the pivot is provided, it is attached here. Uh, this pivot, it, it can uh, go up and down here. Okay, this, this is uh, the uh, float valve is there. Okay, so when uh, the uh, level of fuel inside this float chamber, it decreases, the float valve, it moves downwards. Okay, and this uh, float valve opens and the fuel from the fuel tank comes inside. So when the float, when the fuel is full, the float moves upwards and it closes the fuel supply. So this is uh, your float chamber. Now inside the float chamber, you can see there is a, uh, this uh, metering rod is there. This rod, this is metering rod. Now this metering rod is uh, connected to the accelerator uh, pedal. Okay. Uh, we will see the function of this metering rod, how this metering rod functions. This metering rod has uh, at the end uh, varying uh, uh, diameters, okay. Uh, depending upon uh, the uh, speed with which we are moving. So if we are moving the pedal downwards, uh, this metering rod starts to lift, up, lift upwards. So this metering rod is uh, pivoted at this point here, this junction here. Okay. So this pivoting, uh, this metering rod is connected to the accelerator pedal. Okay. And then uh, uh, inside this uh, carburetor, you can see that this is the inlet from top. Uh, we have the choke valve. Uh, then at the middle, uh, you can see uh, there are three venturis are there. So inside this small, this is your primary venturi. Okay. Uh, then at the bottom, this is my secondary uh, venturi is there. And then this is your the third or the main venturi uh, that is outside. So there are three venturis that are provided inside the Carter carburetor. And then at the bottom, we have the throttle valve. And from this bottom uh, outlet, the air fuel mixture, it goes to the engine combustion chamber. Okay. Now, uh, near this uh, float wall, you can see that there are different types of uh, passages uh, that are made inside this casting. Okay. Now these passages, they uh, play different roles during different uh, load conditions or working conditions of the uh, automobile or the engine. Okay. So at the bottom, you can see there is a screw here. This screw is adjustable and can be, uh, the, the, this uh, passage can be increased or decreased by adjusting the screw here. This is known as your idle adjustment screw. So on, uh, depending upon the vehicle's uh, idling load, that is uh, during the idling conditions, so we can adjust the screw and uh, the supply of uh, air fuel mixture uh, can be adjusted accordingly so that uh, during uh, the ideal uh, load conditions, uh, the engine does not stop. Uh, at the end of this uh, idling uh, screw, there is this idle port. So there is an opening uh, that goes inside the 
carburetor so this is a port that is provided for idling this is called the idling port is there now this passage here uh, that is uh, this is your bypass air passage is there this circuit is known as your idle or low speed circuit idle and low speed circuit is there uh, we will see the functioning of this idle and low speed circuit how it functions okay uh, in the coming uh, slides uh, what is the function of the primary secondary and the main venturis and on the left hand side you can see that uh, there is this uh, circuit uh, is also there this is uh, during uh, for uh, accelerating circuit is there this is your accelerating circuit uh, this uh, lever is uh, again connected to your accelerator pedal so when you are accelerating uh, so this pedal uh, when you press the accelerator pedal this uh, your uh, pedal it moves downwards okay and it forces uh, this spring to contract and the fuel is pushed uh, downwards uh, and uh, when accelerating during accelerating we need uh, uh, richer mixture or more amount of fuel is required so this fuel during acceleration is pushed through this passage into this uh, jet uh, and through this nozzle it goes into the carburetor so this is your accelerator circuit is there okay so this is uh, the, the the main parts of the car carburetor and the various circuits that are there now we will see uh, the working of this carter carburetor and the working of the various circuits uh, of this carter's carburetor now the various circuits that are associated with the carter's carburetor uh, are uh, dependent or are according to the various uh, working uh, conditions or the load conditions of the engine so we have uh, the basic float circuit is there then is your starting circuit is there idle and low speed circuit is there part throttling circuit is there so full throttling circuit is there and then is your acceleration pump circuit is there okay now we will discuss the working of all these circuits one by one uh, in the coming slides now the advantage of having now why we have these three venturis at the uh, so why not one venturi and why we are having three different venturis now the advantage of having more than one venturi in series uh, is that air velocity and thus the depression is increased in the jet orifice portion without affecting the maximum air flow capacity of the carburetor at higher speeds okay so this means that uh, by providing uh, these multiple uh, uh, venturis uh, we can uh, uh, without uh, hindering the supply of air we can provide more compression or more uh, say here depression or vacuum can be created uh, and uh, by creating more vacuum so more uh, at a higher speeds uh, the fuel supply can be uh, optimized by using uh, three different types of venturis okay. now there is a annular blanket of air between uh, the outer venturi which keeps the wet fuel off the walls of the uh, for a great distance thus more of the liquid fuel particles reach the combustion chamber now when uh, your uh, uh, this uh, inner uh, venturi is working so this means that uh, the uh, now here you can see that fuel supply is directly into this uh, uh, inner venturi that is the primary and the secondary venturi now area of contact for the fuel is less here, as compared to area of contact in the outer venturi is there so this means the fuel uh, less fuel will stick to the walls and more fuel will go into the combustion chamber for combustion okay so that is uh, another advantage of uh, giving primary and secondary venturi inside this carter carburetor now the first circuit is your float circuit a uh, float circuit we all uh, we have already seen in your simple carburetor also uh, so we have a uh, float inside this float circuit in that float chamber uh from top the fuel is supplied from the uh, fuel tank 
uh, we have a needle valve attached to this float. This float is pivoted on one side, so it can move up and down. So when the fuel uh, level goes down, uh, this float moves in the downward direction that opens this uh, opening and the fuel starts to come inside the float chamber. And when the fuel rises, the float also rises up and the needle valve closes this uh, inlet and the fuel supply stops. So this is my float circuit. Next is my uh, starting circuit. Now, during the starting of uh, the engine, what we do is we use the choke. So when we pull the choke, that actually closes this wall. So when we pull the choke, it closes this wall. So the area for the air uh, to come inside, it reduces. Okay. So what happens is the air comes inside uh, and it passes through this uh, primary and secondary uh, venturi. Okay. So as the choke wall is closed, the whole of the engine suction is applied to the main nozzle, which then delivers the fuel. So all of the suction, whatever air it passes through this uh, opening from the sides of uh, this choke, it goes into the primary venturi. So inside the primary venturi, when the air goes inside, it creates a vacuum and the fuel is sucked from this fuel supply or the nozzle and uh, the fuel uh, here we get a richer mixture because air supply is less fuel supply is more because the area of cross section of the primary venturi is much more smaller as compared to the main venturi so when the air goes into this uh, primary venturi the vacuum created is more so fuel comes in more and we get a richer mixture so richer mixture of air fuel is uh, delivered into the combustion chamber during the starting circuit. So this means small amount of air is used when the choke is applied. Okay, the choke wall is open. A small amount of air it goes into the this main or the primary venturi, the small venturi. Okay, so here the fuel comes in and uh, it mixes with the small amount of air and it forms a richer mixture. So a richer mixture is supplied to the inlet valve or the inlet port okay, and this is your starting circuit. Next is your idling and low speed circuit. So there are two separate uh, passages uh, to provide uh, this uh, low speed uh, port and idle port. So this port is your idle port here uh, where this uh, idle adjustment screw is provided. So this opening is known as the idle port. Now, in uh, during the idling conditions, because we have not pressed the accelerator, so if we have not pressed the accelerator, what happens is the throttle valve is closed. Now, during this uh, idling condition, the engine is running, but we are not moving in forward direction. We are not accelerating. So this means the throttle valve is closed, but the air fuel mixture is required for the engine to remain uh, working. So there is this uh, circuit that comes in uh, operation. This circuit is known as your uh, idle and low speed circuit is there. So the air that comes in from this choke side, from the upper side, it cannot move in the downward direction because this throttle valve is closed. So this air moves through this idle passage. Okay, from this idle passage, it moves into this passage. And from uh, this uh, fuel supply, the fuel is supplied from this uh, bottom uh, passage into this, it gets mixed with air here. And this air fuel mixture is supplied through this idle port that is below this throttle valve into then into the intake manifold. <clears throat> so this is your idling circuit. Okay. So again, in this uh, lesser amount of air is sucked in because the passage is small and more fuel gets mixed and richer mixture is supplied. So for idling, rich mixture is required. The throttle valve is almost closed. Uh, the whole of the engine suction is now applied to the idle port through which the air and the fuel is drawn, giving a richer mixture. So this idle uh, circuit is used uh, during the idle and low speed circuit. Next type of circuit is uh, your low speed circuit. The first was idle, now is the low speed circuit. Now in the low speed circuit, because we are running the car at low speed, 
say 5 km or 10 km per hour or 20 km per hour, the throttle valve is slightly open. It is not fully open, but it is slightly open. So air, uh, it can move through this venturi in the downward direction. Okay. Plus air starts to move through this idle passage also. And the air fuel mixture takes place uh, inside this uh, idle uh, passage <clears throat> or the idle circuit. And then air fuel mixture goes uh, from below this idle port uh, into the combustion chamber. The throttle valve is opened uh, further after idling, the main nozzle also starts to supply fuel. So from this main, no main nozzle, the fuel starts to come inside. Plus air fuel mixture is supplied through this idle circuit. So at this stage, fuel is delivered both by the main venturi and the low speed port through idle passage. Okay, so at low speeds, the uh, air fuel mixture is supplied both by the uh, the main venturi and the your uh, uh, idle port. Then comes is your part throttle. So here, what the throttle is not fully open, but it is partly open. And now the air starts to move uh, through this. Uh, primary venturi and the fuel from this uh, main uh, uh, nozzle starts to come in and the air fuel mixture is supplied to the main circuit. Now in the full throttle circuit, <coughs> the metering rod is fully lifted and uh, you can see that it is made up of a different uh, diameter uh, uh, at different, okay, at a part load, uh, the area of cross section here open is less. During full throttle, the small pin is there. So more area of cross section is there for fuel to flow. So maximum fuel starts to flow. Okay. Uh, and uh, during the full flow, this uh, throttle valve is fully open. Maximum fuel starts to flow inside uh, the primary venturi and uh, we get uh, more uh, uh, fuel air ratio. Okay. So at full throttle, maximum amount of air passage uh, passes through the venturi, thus a higher rate of fuel flow is desired. The metering rod consists of number of steps of diameter sizes at its bottom is connected with the accelerator pedal. When the accelerator pedal is pressed fully, the throttle is held wide open and simultaneously the metering rod is that it gets lifted. In this condition, uh, the small diameter of the rod is inside the fuel hole, providing large flow area, thus delivering more so here more fuel is starts to flow inside the main uh, nozzle. So this is your fuel throttle circuit. And at the last is your acceleration pedal circuit. Now during acceleration, we need more fuel inside the uh, <coughs> combustion chamber. Okay. Now what happens here is, uh, this is my acceleration uh, circuit on the left hand side of the, uh, this uh, carburetor. Okay, now the fuel is filled here. Now, as the accelerator pedal is pressed abruptly uh, during acceleration, this lever moves in the downward direction. It pushes the fuel in the downward direction and this fuel is pushed through this pipe into this uh, section uh, where uh, through this nozzle, uh, extra fuel is supplied inside the, your carburetor, okay? So richer mixture is supplied uh, during acceleration from the acceleration circuit. So when the acceleration is desired, acceleration pedal is pressed, which actuates the pump, giving an extra spurt of fuel for acceleration. Now leaving the acceleration pedal causes the pump piston to move upwards, thereby sucking more fuel from the float chamber. So when the acceleration pedal is lifted, so this lever moves in the upward direction, it causes vacuum and from the uh, float uh, chamber, the fuel is sucked inside this uh, fuel uh, reservoir inside the acceleration circuit. Now the accelerating pump does not provide continuous supply of fluid fuel for acceleration, but only provides extra spurt of fuel to avoid flat spot. Now during acceleration, we need just a small supply of fuel so that extra power is generated so that the car starts to move in the uh, gets the desired uh, power uh, to accelerate, okay? 
so sometimes what happens is if uh, this uh, accelerated circuit is not provided and we uh, accelerate the car and uh, press the pedal abruptly so there can be a flat spot where you are not getting the pickup to accelerate so that flat spot is uh, uh, avoided by using this acceleration circuit inside the carter carburetor 